Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be episode number two of our GNS 530 tutorial series, the flight plan menu. Coming up next on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back everyone. So before we get started today, let's go over what you can expect in today's video. First, we're going to go over how to create a flight plan in the flight plan menu of the GNS 530. Then we're going to also talk about how to add your approach, as well as we're going to talk about the flight plan catalog and how to import a flight plan from your flight plan catalog. And lastly, we're going to talk about how to import multiple flight plans in the flight plan catalog menu. Now, if you have any questions along the way, please post those down below in the comments section and I'll get right back to you. And as always, if the video helps you out, hit that subscribe, tick that little bell and smash on that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. So with all that out of the way, let's hop into the GNS 530 and get the show on the road. Before we get to making the flight plan today, I just want to let everybody know that I'm going to be using some uncommon terminology here. I went over some of this in the first video. If you haven't seen it, I'll post a link below. Go over there and check that out. It's a basic overview of the 530. And I go over the terminology that I'm going to be using here. And the whole premise of that is to help somebody new coming into the 530. Try not to be so confused about the menus and such. So I hope you understand when I'm not going to be calling these menus and we're going to be using the term chapters. But what we're going to do to start our flight plan is to hit the soft key at the bottom labeled FPL and that's going to open up our flight plan chapter in the GNS 530. Within that chapter we have two pages that we can flip through and we're going to be using the lower right hand knobs to do that. To flip to the next page we're going to scroll on the inner knob and that's going to move us over to the flight plan catalog. And we'll get into how to input some of these flight plans a little bit later in the video. So one of the things that makes the GNS 530 different from the G1000 is that the 530 likes the flight plan to be entered in order. It doesn't like when you enter things out of order, it can kind of get confused. So we're going to practice that today and we're going to enter a flight and let me show you our flight plan. All right, so let's take a look at the flight plan for today so you know exactly what we're gonna be putting into the 530. As you notice here on the left, we have no departure procedure, but we do have an ILS approach. So we're gonna enter this in sequence into the 530. And now we're gonna show you how to do that right now. So to be able to enter our flight plan, we need to first get our cursor to populate on the screen. To do that, we're just gonna press in on the inner knob and we will see that come alive. Next, we can then scroll that inner knob to enter the digits of our ICAO or waypoint. We're gonna use the inner knob to select the number or letter and the outer knob to select the next number or letter in sequence. Once you have your ICAO entered or waypoint, at this point, we can come down and hit the enter button. We can then hit yes to add the waypoint. And now we can enter the next waypoint in sequence, which was FFU. Again, we're gonna roll on the inner knob and it will now allow us to enter that waypoint. Once we have the waypoint entered correctly, we can then hit the enter button and then yes to add the waypoint. So now that that's done, let's bring up the flight plan one more time. So as you can see from FFU, we don't have any more waypoints along the way other than our approach. Because we are at a point now to where we're gonna be entering a procedure, we can now enter the destination airport. Once we have that entered properly, we can hit the enter button and then yes to add the waypoint. Once that is finished, we can now enter the approach procedure. To do that, we're gonna come right down to the proc button and we're just gonna give that a tap. And now we can select the approach. To select the approach, all we would need to do is to roll on the inner knob, and then we can use the outer knob to then move that cursor down to the approach we wish to choose. Once we highlight the one we want, we can hit the enter button. It will also populate that approach on the map over here to the left. We can pick our transition. Again, to choose that, we're gonna scroll on the inner knob, 
use the outer knob to pick our transition. Because we are using FFU in our flight plan already, we're just gonna pick that, hit enter, and then hit the load. And once you hit the load, it's gonna bring us back to the main page of our flight plan. And now we can scroll through everything just to make sure it's all correct. Again, we need to get that cursor to populate, so we're gonna press in on the inner knob and then use the outer knob to scroll through. Now, one of the things that you're gonna notice of the 530 is that we do not have altitude restrictions here. So you will need to monitor that yourself and make sure you have the appropriate chart for the ILS or RNAV approaches. And you can pick the charts up either on skyvector.com or chartfox.org. Links will be down in the description. Okay, great. So you've got your flight plan entered, but wait a minute, you forgot to enter a waypoint. What do you do now? Well, let's talk about that. So from KTVY, there's a waypoint in between that and the FFU Vortac. So to do that, all we wanna do is to bring our cursor and highlight the FFU waypoint. Now we can use our inner scroll knob again to enter the new waypoint between FFU and KTVY. The waypoint we forgot to enter was Cedar, so we're just going to enter that here, press the enter button, and we're gonna pick which waypoint it is. If there's duplicates, they will be here. Um, so we're just gonna pick the first one, hit enter, and then add waypoint. Now if we look at the flight plan menu, you can see that it has entered the Cedar waypoint before the FFU Vortac. That's exactly what we wanted to happen here. All right, so now you know what to do if you forget to add a waypoint and you know how to go back and add that. What do you do if you have an extra waypoint that you wanna delete from your flight plan? Well, let's get into that right now. So one of the things that you wanna make sure you never do is you never wanna delete any part of your procedures. So you don't wanna come down here and delete any one of these waypoints along the procedure. It will really mess up the 530. But if you have a waypoint before your procedure that you entered by accident, then let's show you how to get rid of it. And it's pretty simple. You just wanna make sure that you have your cursor active and then highlight the waypoint you wanna delete. In this case, we're gonna use the FFU as the waypoint. We're just gonna come over here, hit the clear button. It's gonna ask us, do we wanna remove it? hit the enter, and it's now removed that FFU waypoint. But notice it is still in our approach because it is part of the approach. To go back to our navigation menu, we could just hit the FPL button one more time, and now we can see the flight plan on our screen. To declutter, again, we're just gonna hit the clear button. So as you can see, we are leaving KTVY on our way to the Cedar waypoint, and then hitting the FFU on our approach. Now, one other thing that I did wanna to touch on, if you wanna start over on your flight plan and you wanna start back from scratch, all you need to do is to come over and hit the menu button, and this will allow us to delete the flight plan. We could also invert the flight plan, so if, if we get to a destination and we wanna fly the exact same flight plan back, then we can do that as well here by just clicking the invert flight plan. We can scroll through these using the inner knob. And from this menu, we can also select our approach, arrival, departure. So you don't necessarily have to hit the procedure button. You could also do that from the menu button. Now getting back to deleting waypoints, the same goes for approaches and departures. So if you wanna delete this approach, you can do that one of two ways. You can do that from the menu and you can go down to where it says remove approach or you can bring up your cursor, highlight approach and then hit the clear button and then we can hit yes to remove the approach. And now as you can see, it got rid of all the approach waypoints on our flight plan and we are now left with our initial departure airport, our Cedar waypoint and our destination. All right, so if anybody has any questions about page one of the flight plan chapter, leave it down below in the comments section and I'll get right back to you. But wait, there's more! <laughs> so now let's move over to page two and see what we have here. Now this is gonna be the flight plan catalog and this is where we're gonna be able to store up to 19 different flight plans. So this is gonna be perfect for planning alternate flight plans, alternate destinations, alternate takeoff approaches, 
and any other flight plans you just want to have stored in here. So first let's go over how to activate any one of these particular flight plans. So to do that, we just need to get the cursor up on the screen. So we're just going to come down to the inner knob, give that a press, and that will highlight our cursor. We can then use the outer knob to scroll to the flight plan that we want to use. Once we highlight that, we can then hit enter, and then it will ask us to load the flight plan. We can then hit yes, and it will now populate our new flight plan over on the main flight plan page. Pretty cool, huh? If we decide that, well, I picked the wrong flight plan, all we need to do is to go back to page two, hit in on the button, highlight the one we really wanted, hit enter, yes, and it will now populate that flight plan on page one. To get back to that menu, you may have to get the cursor back or just wait, and it will populate here for us. So that is another thing that if you have some of these saved flight plans, Give it a couple seconds for it to load everything. It's not gonna be instantaneous. Okay, great, so you can have up to 19 flight plans in your catalog. whoop de doo But how do you put them in? Well, let's talk about that. Now, one thing I did forget to mention, we are using the PMS GNS 530 add-on for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'll post a link down below for that as well. And the best place that I recommend to get that add-on is through the community downloader. It makes it very simple to keep up with updates and it's a one-click install. I'll post a video down below. Anyway, so let's get back to how to input these flight plans. All of this work is gonna be done either in your community folder or wherever you have the PMS 50 GNS 530 add-on mod. Okay, so for most people, your add-on is probably gonna be in your community folder. For somebody using add-on linker, you may have it in a different location. So you would wanna open up your community folder or your alternate location and click on the PMS 50 GNS 530 add-on. When you do that, it's gonna open up the contents of that folder and we're just gonna look for the FPL folder. Once you find the folder, we can double click on that and in this folder is where we can input any of our flight plans that we wanna have in our flight plan catalog of the GNS 530. To enter this flight plan, it's not as easy as just typing in some waypoints and letting it go. So you're gonna need an alternate program to create it for you, unless you know how to write code, I guess. So these flight plans have to be entered in a PLN format. So you can either do that using skyvector.com or you can use little nav maps which I had displayed earlier. So let's go through a tutorial now on how to input your flight plan if you're gonna be using little nav maps. All right, so now that I got little nav map back up on the screen, I'm not gonna go through the entire process of creating a flight plan. If you're unsure about how to create a flight plan with little nav maps, I'll also post a link down below on how to do that. So once you have your flight plan input here, then we just need to export that to our desktop. So to do that, we're just going to go up here to file. And then before we export anything, we just need to come over here to the export options. And you wanna make sure that all of these are checked. If not, it is not gonna input certain waypoints in your flight plan. So it's very important that you come over here and check all of these. Once you have checked all of those, then we can come up here to export flight plan as MSFS. And that's also going to export it as a PLN file. Now you can also select your start position, but for the GNS 530, we don't need to do that. So we can go ahead and hit the save. But when we hit the save, there's two different ways that we can do this. We can either hit save right here, and that's gonna save it to my normal downloads folder, or we can save it directly to that FPL folder in the GNS 530. Now, I don't like to do that. I like to download this directly into my download folder, and then I'll move it from there. I'll go ahead and hit the save here. It's gonna save it to my downloads. So now on the right, I have my download folder where I downloaded that flight plan. And over here on the left is the flight plan folder of the GNS 530. And these are those two flight plans that I have entered right there behind me. So now all you need to do is to just take this flight plan that you just created, 
and just drag it and drop it into your flight plan folder of the GNS 530. And now the only other thing that you need to do is to make sure that you create the correct file name for this. So all of your flight plans have to start with FPL and then you're going to number it for the flight plan number that you want it to be. So you can highlight your flight plan, right click, and then go down to rename and then we're just going to name this FPL4. Now let's go back over to the GNS 530 inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. If we go back to the original flight plan page and then go back, look at that. We now have that FPL4 that we have just entered into the folder of the GNS 530. So as you can see, this is live, so you don't have to restart the simulator for these to take effect. You can put as many flight plans as well, you can put up to 19 flight plans in here, and on the fly, you can have these populate here in the 530. All right, that's gonna finish us up for today, everyone. If you have any questions, post those down below. And if you haven't done so, hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash on that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, Keep the blue side up. We'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.